Yeah, I'm Jeff Anderson. I'm the co-marketing lead for the 100K, and I'm sitting here with Brad Feld. Thank you very much for your time, Brad. My pleasure. And uh, I have a quick question here for you. So one of your investing themes is human-computer interaction. Can you talk to a little bit about why you see so much potential in this field? Sure. So uh, for us, HCI is built on the premise that the way we interact with computers 20 years from now will make the way that we interact with computers today uh, completely obsolete and look as though the way we interacted with computers 20 or 30 years ago, which if you think about punch cards, ridiculous kind of construct today. If you ask somebody 15 years ago whether people would walk down the street and type on a piece of glass that was connected uh, to all the information that they didn't want to be connected at, they'd look at you kind of funny. Like that, that wouldn't make sense. And in fact, the way that we think about computers 20 years from now, in a lot of ways, is very hard to understand how to think about them. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer that the machines have already taken over and they're convincing us to put all of human information into them. And they're actually uh, so lazy that they're letting us do all the work to help program them to put the information into them the way they want. But if you sort of extrapolate that out and think about the sort of serious idea of the curves that we're dealing with in terms of computing and the way that we as humans interact with what we think of as computer technology, the idea that over the next 20 years it's going to rapidly change and rapidly accelerate is really front of mind. Okay. Thank you. Uh, also, so the 100K is filled with a number of aspiring entrepreneurs. Can you talk a little bit about the most common uh, issues and, uh, and misconceptions that, that, uh, that entrepreneurs have when dealing with VCs? Yeah, there's probably a lot of them. I think that um, for starters, there, the notion that, a, that VC as a category is the same that AVC is a generic thing um, is, is not valid, right? Every VC is different. Every venture firm has its own characteristics. There are actually different strategies and different ways that individuals uh, interact with entrepreneurs. And one of the most important things for an entrepreneur to do is really understand the types, of the types of people in the firm and what their characteristics are and how the people in the firm behaves. Um, there's a lot of movement, so some venture firms and some venture capitalists have very clearly defined long-term strategies. They have a way that they're going to be functioning over a period of time. Others are very chaotic. Many venture firms have a playbook that they've been executing for a number of years that you know, moves around a little bit, but it looks a certain way. Others, you know, whatever the sort of newest trendy thing they're chasing after. So for an entrepreneur, thinking that a venture capitalist is a generic thing and that all venture capitalists are the same, very different. The, the next thing I'd say is, like any business partnership, um, an entrepreneur should know what they're getting. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs are not nearly aggressive enough about trying to figure out what's behind the venture capitalist, what the reputation of the venture capitalist is. It's remarkable to me the number of times that entrepreneurs don't do a lot of work to explore the venture capitalist background and what it's going to be. And it's so easy today, not just because the information is so readily available, but the information about who the venture capitalists have invested in and your ability to have access to them as an entrepreneur is so easy. So I think sort of in, in that vein, really taking advantage of the amount of information uh, that exists is important. The last is recognize that uh, the pressures and the dynamics within a venture capital firm vary dramatically based on the performance of the firm, the tenure of the people, people's personal dynamics. They're generally small uh, organizations, even you know, funds that have a lot of capital under management are still relatively small organizations. So there's a lot of dynamics inside the organizations that, that 15, 20 years ago were very difficult to understand. Today are relatively easy to figure out just by talking to people and taking advantage of that knowledge in the context of being an entrepreneur actually helps you as an entrepreneur raise money, understand which VCs are going to be good for you, understand who's going to deal with what kinds of issues, especially when there's stress, and really calibrate what the venture capitalist says they're going to do or can do with what they actually do in practice. Okay. So uh, you've been involved with 100K for a number of years. You were a judge for... A 10K, I was uh, 100K. You guys have all this money now. Oh, that was a long time ago. I, you know, it wasn't the 1K, but it was the 10K. So uh, can you talk a little bit about your favorite 100K or 10K companies and uh, your favorite 100K or 10K com uh, moments? Sure. Um, I, was, uh, I was a judge uh, when I was here and lived in Boston until about the time that I left Boston. So for five or six years, I was involved in the 90s. Um, and not only was I a judge, but I, I was actively investing as an angel investor between 94 and 96. And I invested in a number of the companies that went through the program, including some that ended up being very successful. So I was an investor in uh, NetGenesis was in one year. 
Uh, Harmonics was in one year, which are the guys that did uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band. And I think they didn't even get past the first round. Um, I was an investor in a company called Thinkfish that uh, I went through the program. Um, I, of course, stopped investing or stopped being a judge uh, the year before Akamai went through the program. So, of course, my timing there was impeccable. Um, uh, I had a great time with it. The, 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 when, I, when I was involved at the very beginning of it, um, I would say the people didn't really know what entrepreneurship meant. Like That wasn't a term in the early 1990s. And the idea of uh, a competition around starting up a business and going from that very beginning concept through you know, presentation of where you're going um, was incredibly powerful. And, um, I have long believed that it's really critical uh, at a place like MIT to take advantage of the natural resources of MIT, which is the cross-campus activity. Right? MIT has, it, best in the world in my opinion, many of the, the science and te technological disciplines. I think it's the greatest place in the world in terms of the type of intellect that comes out of MIT, um, uh, both at an undergraduate and graduate level, and it's got an outstanding business school. And linking those pieces together, the core innovators, the core technologists, and the business people, and seeing the magic that happens when you get them together in a concentrated period of time with a clear goal is really, really powerful. Um, so I, I've always been an enormous fan of the program. It's been very fun to watch it grow over the years and evolve, because it's not static, right? It's not the idea that you, know, you have this certain drill and you execute this very static sort of thing, and, you start and at the end you deliver a business plan and people judge you based on the business plan, right? It's a very dynamic thing. You actually look at the companies coming out of the program and it's a remarkable number of real companies that got formed by people that connected together while they were in this process. And actually